Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Easy Triumph Stir. And we've got Cruz just rolled up. Check it out. Trailered the uh, XS400 over so we could do some work to the <coughs> controls and uh, maybe some other stuff. But uh, let's get this bike unloaded and see what's up. Did you paint the tank? Oh. It looks fresh. Oh, okay. Oh, like you did with the Roadster too, huh? Like you did with the Roadster? Yeah, I tried it on this one before I did the Roadster. We got the bike downloaded on the center stand. Uh, so yeah, he's running a stock brake master cylinder here. As you can see, it's pretty worn out. It's 40 years old. Stock brake, perch, line. And this is a not a modern clutch perch and lever, but it's a little bit better than what he had on it when we started, when he brought the bike here the first time. So... We've got here a very similar setup to what I ran or what I'm currently running on my XS500. Uh, you've got an FZ07, FZ09 clutch perch and adjuster, FZ07, FZ09 brake master cylinder, and then some shorty adjustable levers that he just picked up on Amazon, which worked just fine. Um, and we've got a steel braided line that I had uh, lying around in the shop. And so we're going to get to uh, taking these parts off and putting on the new stuff. And then uh, we'll bleed that brake system. And if time permits, we'll look at some other stuff today. So here we go. What we're going to want to do first is break this loose here because once this is off of the bar, it's going to be a lot more difficult to break that loose. And once we've done that... <clears throat> We'll go ahead and loosen these. Uh, actually, just take them all the way out, and then we should be able to remove the whole clutch or the whole uh, brake master cylinder and line. And then we'll disconnect it from down here, and we'll put the new one on and reconnect the line. Am I taking this completely off? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, I just break it? Yeah. Because you'll start leaking. Yeah, it's all going to work. Yeah. Oh, I think we are. We're losing fluid at the top here. My fault. Are they losing it that much? That's all. Just, uh, it, uh, brake fluid just makes an absolute mess. Yeah. And it's highly corrosive, so just be careful with it. All right, so from here, we'll want to Why are we using this, right? Well, he's taking that brake line off. Here, you'll want this too, because that's going to make a mess. Is it going to make down here or where? Oh, so we got to unclamp that too? Yeah, yeah well, that's going to be helpful when we run the new line. So. Yeah, um, we'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to just take that off. And one thing that I had forgotten uh, was the brake switch, but that's off now. So we'll just get the rest of this brake line off. Yeah, as soon as that's out, <clears throat> hopefully there's some decent crush washers. Yeah. A 
What's up? Lift it all out of there. That's fine. Good. All right. He's got a new banjo bolt, and um, we're using the cross washers just because we only have one new set, and we're going to use those at the master cylinder. Okay. Um, but the old banjo uh, was pretty gunked up, so I had a new one sitting around from when I ordered my new calipers yeah. from Mike's XS. We also have this thing, which will run the line through, and clamp the line to the fork with one of these. Now we're clamping on the new master cylinder and then uh, once we get that situated as far as tightened down enough we'll figure out how we want to run this line and we'll install the new lever. Line and the banjo bolt here on the master. Line is run under here. Not the most optimal just because like I said it was a spare steel braided line I had in the garage. I think it's a 34 millimeter or 34 inch uh, line, so it's a bit long. Probably needs to be under 30 to fit this bike correctly. So this will get him by until um, you can order a line that's the correct size. So right now what we're doing is we're prepping it to put the lever on so we can make sure that fits and works correctly and then we'll tighten everything up and adjust it the way he wants it for when he rides. And so we've got the uh, brake master cylinder on, the lever, and the line is all tightened up and everything. So from this point, we're going to put fluid in the um, reservoir and start pumping it and trying to get as much in the line as possible. And then when I get to a certain point that um, there's no more air coming out at the top or anything, I'll compress the piston with my hand. I'll push the caliper against the disc, which will force fluid and air into the master. I'll do it carefully so that way it doesn't spew brake fluid all over, but that's the quickest way to bleed a single brake um, system. Sometimes a dual brake system you can do that way if it has two lines coming off of the master cylinder. All right, I'm gonna compress this caliper again. We'll see if we can get some air to come up. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, did bubble yeah. bubbles come up? Yeah, a lot. All right, go ahead and pump it again. It's just a process, just keep repeating, you pump it, get fluid in the line back down to the caliper, and then uh, push it, and see you've got air coming up right now too. So We just got done bleeding the system. Um, I'd say it took roughly 20 minutes, a little bit longer than I expected, and I think it was because we replaced an entire line and master cylinder, so there was nothing but air in the system. But... What we have here is when this starts engaging is right here, and that's that's it. I mean, there's there's incredible braking power right now from this upgraded uh, and modernized master cylinder for this bike, obviously. Uh, shorty lever, lever helps, too, because it's going to obviously add that leverage. Um, but the fact that we've got a steel braided line and spent the time to get practically all the air out of the system uh, really paid off. Uh, I told Cruz that... <clears throat> After he rides this a few times since we've installed these parts, it's going to free up some air in the system as well. And then all he has to do is push the caliper against the disc and it'll force that air into the master cylinder. And then he just pumps it again and it'll be better than it was. So what we're going to do now, we're going to loosen some of these components, then loosen these, slide the bar out so we don't have to take the grip off because that's probably glued at this point, or if not, it's on there really good. Um, and then we'll slide the new parts on and then put this back in. And then we'll have the uh, the new clutch perch and shorty lever for that side. We just finished buttoning up the lever. So um, I think in any case where you're ordering parts on eBay or um, Amazon and they're not OE parts, you're going to potentially run into an issue. So the lever didn't come with a spacer to fit the perch. And even though the levers were sold as specific for the bike that this perch came off of. So we had to make a spacer um, and it'll, it'll do. You know, it, it functions just fine. So um, 
I adjusted the clutch down here on the case to get the free play back in, and uh, and eventually I'm sure we'll get a different spacer for it that is meant for it. But there you have it. Um, like I said, brake master cylinder and clutch perch off an FZ07, FZ09, it's the same one, 2016-2017 um, in that range. And then uh, shorty adjustable levers <clears throat> and a steel braided brake line. Uh, I think the coolest part of this whole thing is this brake power um, and how much, how, how little amount of flex there is now with this new setup. So uh, it's exciting to see how it's going to handle as far as uh, the braking goes once he finally gets a chance to put this out on the road. But uh, that's it, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll have this bike back, the uh, 77500, the Slim, um, all kinds of stuff going on, and uh, we'll put it right on the channel. So um, just stay tuned. Stay safe, guys.